I, I guess it would be safe to say that this Dingo's reunion may not have happened had it not been for the, the ARIA Hall of Fame last year. That would be very correct, in fact, yeah. I mean, we'd had, uh, we'd had offers in the past and suggestions that we should do this, but, you know, the time was never right and everybody was too spread out all over the place and otherwise occupied. And, uh, and uh, this came along and brought us together where we had to play live on the show. So that put us in a room together to rehearse and, and see what the band sounded like. And uh, we were pleasantly surprised after all those years. So, yes, it was the catalyst. Talk about your appearance that night. Was it was it a nerve-wracking experience wondering if the, if the band could re- recapture the magic in, in that one brief appearance? Oh, not, not really. I mean, we were on enough before you could, you know, do too much damage. And uh, it, was, it went really well. Was there any tentativeness about going ahead with, with this album and tour? Uh, once we made up our minds to do it, no, I think everybody was committed to do it, and and um, we felt, you know, it was, it was a good thing. Once we we got the songs together and started to hear where it was going, um, we were encouraged by that, and and thought uh, once we made the commitment, we, we had to see it through. So it was uh, it was kind of exciting in a way. I guess one one huge advantage you have is it's not like you've all had to come out of retirement from music for this. You've all been very active and musically, so it's not like you've had to blow the cobwebs off your gear and 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 start all over again, is it? Well, f- more for some of us than others, I think. Um, you know, Broderick and myself and Chris have been active all these years, but um, John John's been teaching biology at a college in in Baltimore in, in the U.S., so he hadn't really been. You know, his musical career had sort of gone by the way for many years. Um, so for him, it's a it's, it's a real comeback. Tell us about the re- re- recording of this album. It all came together at your place in Arizona, didn't it? That's right. Yeah, they came over around Christmas time and spent a couple of weeks there, and, uh, and we, we put down the tracks there. And um, it all went very smoothly. Um, it went really well. When you're sitting down to make a recording with a group of guys you haven't recorded with for, for 30 odd years, is, is your first thought to, to try and recreate that classic sound or make it a Dingoes for 2010 sound? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we thought about it long and hard before we went into this and, and discussed it, and uh, I think we were, we were more concerned about trying to think about what the band would be like now had we stayed together, you know, like we would have made it through the 80s with some really bad records and um, maybe been redeemed in the 90s, you know, and, and found our maturity now maybe, I don't know. But um, we tried to retain some of the, some of the, the sound that we had before, but, but not by getting bogged down in it. We wanted to move ahead and see what it might have evolved to now. I think I think the record sort of, you know, shows that pretty well. The song selection process for the album was it a case of choosing from material that each of you may have already had, or were the songs specifically written for the project? No, it, it was pretty much a batch of songs that came from a, a storehouse that we all had over the years that we piled up and hadn't really um, put to use, and um, it was it was just really a, a big culling process, really, and in the end it came down to a vote. We had a short list. And, and we all voted on it, and this is the batch we ended up with. Have you had a chance to think about whether you're going to look at this as strictly a one-off at this stage, or is... Uh, well, we, we, we pretty much decided on that up front. Um, that was pretty much part of the condition that we do it, just a one-off thing. But, you know, like maybe do an occasional tour, but mm-hmm. I don't think we'll be recording again. I think this is it. Just going back over a bit of history, when the, when the Dingoes evolved, did you yourself see it as an extension of the music that you were previously involved with in, in, in country radio? Yeah, well, it was for me, and that, and that was the purpose of getting the band together, I think, um, was to take it into new areas that country radio didn't go. I, I wanted a more rock and roll sort of band at the time, and uh, by joining forces with Broderick and Chris, um, you know, it, it, it fused their influences as well and uh, took it somewhere else. That first Dingo's album, it's a genuine classic of Australian music. Do you remember feeling at the time of its release that you were sitting on something pretty special? We thought it was pretty special. We always did. We were a little bit arrogant in that respect, I guess, back then. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we, we thought we'd made something that was, was unique, at least. Just looking back on the whole American experience for the band, it's well documented now how everything unraveled uh, with the Leonard Skinner uh, disaster. Have you ever pondered what might have been, had the course of events been a little bit different over there? That's the great mystery. I mean, we, we were set up to go. We were about to go on this big tour across America to promote the album that just came out, Five Times the Sun. And we had all the backing with A&M and from management and the whole works, you know, behind us. So when this when this sort of, when this happened, it, it, it put a stop to everything and... We were just held in limbo for a long, t- long time. Um, but the, the the alternative, what might have happened, who knows what might have happened, John? Yeah. I mean, we never know, do we? We never do. 
It yeah. did, however, take a while for the wheels to get in motion in America for you. It was, I think, three years after the first album before Five Times the Sun. Did that gap lose some momentum for you back home here in Australia as well? well I think we lost a lot of steam as a band during that period because we were sort of held uh, in abeyance while, while they sorted out their problems with the management company and um, we, we were just left left on ice for a while, you know, and not, not really working and not really doing anything. And I think during that period the band fragmented and it led to our eventual demise. The band was never without its share of drama. There's the influence, uh, infamous uh, shooting incident that uh, laid Chris Stockley up for for a length of time. What do you recall of that? Uh, not a whole lot. I wasn't I wasn't present at the time, so I, I was I heard it like secondhand, like everybody else. But um, from what Chris tells me, it was a pretty horrific evening. Uh, they just went to a party. He and John Lee went to a party down in Brighton, and uh, they're coming out, and some guy pulled up in a car and asked for beer, and they said they had none. They walked off down the street. Next thing they knew couple of pops and Chris went down mm. and uh, laid him up for quite a while. He's very lucky. In hindsight, were you happy with the move to, to re-record some songs from the first album for the, for the second album? Do you think it might have been better to provide the original versions with new material for the for American release and perhaps a different product altogether back home in Australia? Yeah, it's a bit hard to say. I mean, the first album, Five Times the Sun, we, we redid a couple of songs that we had done, including Way Out West. Um, we did that on the, on the American album because I think what well, we thought this was going to be the, the debut for, for the American audience, so they wouldn't have heard this other stuff anyway. So we might as well package all of that all of that stuff into the one the one CD and and, and get it out at the time, you know. Um, so so they get a, a full representation of the band. Um, I think that was the thought process behind it. Mm. Whether it was a good idea or not, it probably would have been better to move on and, and do new stuff, maybe. Certainly with the, with, the, with the second album in the States, we should have done that. I, I don't think we sh- should have repeated songs from the earlier album, which we did. Yeah. Um, you know. Orphans of the Storm. It came out at a, at a time when the band was all but split and kind of got lost at the time. Would you like to see that album get another run? Uh, not, not particularly, no. I, I think we'll probably do a song or two from that album, which we've never performed live. Um, so we'll probably do that in, in the repertoire when we tour. But um, no, I, I think some things are better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when the dingoes ended, did you know right away what you wanted to do with the next phase of your career? Not really sure. I, I was I was sitting around. I was I was still being um, on a retainer to be a songwriter um, in, in in New York, and and I was at a bit of a loose end for about a year, not sure what to do. And then I came back to Australia, and uh, I started to find my feet. I got more and more into songwriting, and had a bit of success with that. And then that eventually led me to produ- producing over the years. Um, and all the time, I, I you know I kept up my playing. I was playing with different people like Richie Clapton and others back here, and kept playing in America as well, doing session work. And um, it, it it all just pointed me towards producing in the end, and um, that's what took over eventually. So, what what would be your expectations for for this album and tour? What would be a, a pleasing result for you? Well, I think we have modest expectations, um, given given the current state of things in the music scene. Um, I don't think we expect to crash the, the mainstream market. I think it'll be a, a, an alternate kind of album that, that could do rather well in that scene. Um, you know, there's a big there's a big audience out there for this kind of music, and it seems to do rather well um, if you hit the right nerve and target the right audience. Um, hopefully, this will fit right in there. Great. So we have modest expectations, though. You know. And the the lineup for this tour, there's a, a few extra players thrown in as well. Yeah, we have uh, some people who played on the album. Uh, Ashley Davies has taken over the drums. Uh, he played on the album and uh, will play with us live. Uh, Chris Copping on keyboards and Kevin Kevin Bennett from Sydney uh, on backing vocals and rhythm guitar. So just to add to it. And I believe you got a, a compilation CD of your own uh, out of, at the same time. Yeah, that's correct. It's called Taking the Blame, and it's uh, it's a selection of songs that I've produced over the last 15, 20 years. I've done about 40 albums now. And uh, I, I went through that and picked out some uh, some favourites and put them onto a compilation CD. That'll be coming out. I'll be I'll be selling that at gigs during the tour. Uh, that'll be available then, probably through my website as well by that time. And you've just finished up some recording with Shane Howard too, I believe. Yeah, he he came to Tucson as well to my studio there. We 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 recorded his new album, Going a Dreaming, over there. And uh, that that'll be coming out I think around about the same time as the Dingoes one, almost the same week. So. It's all happened. Fantastic. And have you uh, had any um, feedback on the response for the tour so far? How are the, the tickets selling? 
Well, we sold out Armenian Town Hall down in Gippsland, and I believe Oakley has sold out as well, Oakley Caravan Music Club. So, um, uh, and tickets seem to be selling really well, especially in Melbourne right now. Fantastic. So, so we'll any possibility there might be a, a slight extension on the tour if, this, if that keeps up? That's, that's in, in, the, in the works. I mean, if we sell out enough, you know, enough dates, then we might want to redo another show in Melbourne at the end. Terrific. And before I let you go, Karen, what, what's on your books once you head back to Arizona? I'm not sure yet. Um, recover from this, number one. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I don't know. I might come back here to do some more stuff too. I'm not sure. Tremendous. Hey, thanks for taking a, a, a brief time to, to catch up with us this morning. There's a lot of people very excited and really looking forward to this tour and the, thanks, al- and the album, of course. And uh, we'll be there with bells on. Great. Sounds good. Good on you. Thanks a lot, Pleasure to talk to you. All the best. Okay, thanks. Bye. Cheers.